Hey Mitchell, this is Mark Harris. Are you ready to take down some notes? Good. I'm ready to give them to you. Here we go. Let's take a look see, shall we? Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! Cool. We got a lot of nice animation going on, a lot of good arcs. A lot of good overlap. Let's look at some of the acting from the beginning. You have a character who is trying to put off the fact that he's actually pretty excited, and then we reveal that he has an extra arm to another character, who is the doctor. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. Now, this shot works fairly well. It might be nice if he was slightly more in the silhouette. He tends to get a little crowded next to the frame here especially for this area as he comes back up. It's right before the end of the shot. So if you just keep him in that area, this tangent will be, I think, less abrupt. Your acting here works pretty well. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something. Okay, so when we cut to the next shot and we see his expression, it doesn't really tell us annoyed or angry or hiding the feeling that he's actually happy. It's not that specific. He actually just seems a little half-lidded, which makes him feel tired, and his brows don't really add to the overall attitude. So if he looked something that looked more like this, let's take his brows and make more of a shape out of them that says, I'm intense. So we're kind of just like, we're kind of pointing them down to more of an angry shape. Also, his mouth is just kind of straight across, and you might, I don't know if you want something like a little curl at the end. Like that, like a slight frown. Usually with the lips, you want to keep a shape that's somewhat telling of the attitude. So an, over, <laughs> so an overall happy face or a sad face. A lot of this is the corners because you can still get a, like this, right, which is kind of like, a, like an M shape, but it's like a frown. So with the mouth, you want to be a little bit more specific too. Either give him a bit of a frown or happy face or something. Point is you want his attitude to read clear. He looks a little dazed slash tired, and I imagine you probably want him slightly more intense. The fact that you have the eyelids down makes him look a little bit sleepy. So you might want to bring some intensity to him by uh, opening the eyelid just a bit. If you're going to go for a deadpan look, it'll probably help if you have the eyelids like this, almost touching the eyes. So you're not using that. You're, you're using the brows here to cut off the eye instead of the eyelid itself. So this is all brow in here. That'll look more intense. So let's keep looking on at this guy. You go and do something like this. And, and again, he's looking a little sleepy here. So make sure you keep a similar expression as he's looking down. You don't want tired eyes. And totally redeem you! So at this point, he's still looking a little bit sleepy, and he's looking up into the air. You might just want to keep his gaze on the other character so that we keep him focused and in the scene. And then raise his eyelids for uh, more intensity. Redeem yourself! Here you're very close to this expression, but again, probably too much upper eyelid and his brows aren't really emphasizing the attitude. So with these brows here, you might want to pull these up. They look a little bit relaxed. You want to have the brows be part of the expression. In fact, you can even give them a bigger smile as well. Overall, your expressions could be a little bit more specific and pushed. So let's talk about the other character. As you go through here, he's chastising this character, and this character doesn't stick up for himself. He kind of just kind of like, uh, whoops, I'm sorry, I, uh, Whoops, I, 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 and he goes and attacks him with a hug of a third hand. It may have been more interesting if this character had more power. Imagine a character that's, that's very serious and I did my job and I did it correct. There's going to be more conflict when, when that meets another character. It's like, I don't know, can't believe what you did. Now here, he seems a little bit too limp. He just lets him take over. 
And it's, it's a little less appealing, I think, for a character not to try to win a goal over another character. So if he was still stiff, uh, uh, I'm uncomfortable. It would add more drama to the scene. So here all of the animation is really nice and all the, and all the limbs flowing and whatnot. Him being stiff would probably be actually the better choice here, I think. Feeling uncomfortable in general. Especially if in the beginning, if he felt like more of a comfortable character. But this attitude actually right here is kind of like, what do you have to say to me? <gasps> and then going into that is a bigger contrast from the beginning of the scene to the end of the scene. So on the reveal of the hand, it may be nicer to push the fact that it's a dead hand by him picking it up and it doesn't do anything. Instead of picking it up and he, and he still holds on to it. To really show that it's dead, come on, live, live. That might be a way to push what you have going on there in your acting. And when you're posing fingers, it's nice to have shapes that are a little more appealing. Right now, they feel like they're all separated. And if you take these fingers and you get rid of all this negative space between the fingers to something that's more cohesive. It'll be a simpler shape and more appealing. Same with this one. You might take these outer fingers and curl them in just a bit. So the overall shape is this triangle. Right? It's okay to intersect these fingers. Another thing that fingers do is they're never completely flat in that they bend like that all together. They all want to curl inside to each other. It's like a point in the middle of your palm where they want to meet. So you just take these outer fingers, rotate them, and have them kind of bend inward like that. So it'll feel like a more natural shape. And I'll say, you've, you've picked a choice here that's like, grabs him with all the hands, but the fact that he's happy with them, try to come up or brainstorm with some other things that he could have done with those hands. Like maybe the first set of hands grabs, and then the other hand like pats him on the head like he's really happy. Just a way to push the idea of using an extra hand. So for you overall, the note for me is to exaggerate a lot of your attitudes and to also just think a little bit deeper into the, the acting of them and their choices. On this blink, you've got a little bit of eyebrow in there. You know what's also helpful is as you move the as you move the pupils left and right out of frame of slow in or slow out to them. If you're doing an eye art, for instance, from the left to the right, you can get a little bit of life in the eyelids if you slightly change the up and down of this eyelid shape. Right? If you have controls, it's nice to have a slight wave at the top of the eye that follows the pupil around. Like this. Or you can just generally move this whole eyelid up up or down just a smidge so that the pixels don't lock. And then also you can do that and help the, the these are the brows, you can have the brows kind of push a little bit left or right too, if it's a bigger movement. So here I feel like the shoulders could be used more. And that might mean that the torso also is used, because right now I don't see the spine spine bones really changing to help that arm twist over and get to the chair. You know, I imagine the spine might go back just a little bit as he goes to grab the chair, this twisting motion, and the shoulders come up and then grabs. And also it'd be nice to, as you see the arm come forward, to see the shoulder help push the, the wheel of the wheelchair around. Watch out for your buried eyes there. You got a good antic here. Watch out for your eyes as he's reacting here. In this shot, it actually, it's always fun to see the character's reaction. So a lot of your reaction is getting hit in a giant move. But if you watch, if you watch his face change first, and don't let redeem yourself. If you use the face change as the antic, not just the down as the antic, and then does his stuff, it'll be more dynamic and you'll read the character's expression. You'll read his deep inner thoughts. It's 
for your breathing here, you could use a little more shoulder too. Just like a slight up and down in this area. So as he blinks here, if you have the brows mimic the upper eyelids just a little bit, and maybe like a frame or two later, it'll help loosen up the face. Cool, good job. Good spacing, good arcs. Work on your acting and being specific with your facial expressions and think a little bit deeper into the character and how two characters are interesting the way that they play off of each other in contrast. A character that's very strong against another strong character creates more contrast or more, uh, more conflict. Enjoy yourself, sir. Good work and good luck in the future.